Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at the anatomy of the blue crab, Calinectes sapidus. Um, it is the economically important food crab along the east coast of the United States and gulf coast of the United States. <clears throat> Let's look at the external anatomy first. We'll look at the dorsal uh, anatomy, and then we'll look at the ventral anatomy. By the way, just to give you an idea about how big this animal is, from tip to tip on its carapace, it is 13 centimeters. And from anterior to posterior end of the carapace, we'll call it six and a half centimeters. So let's look at the external anatomy, dorsal anatomy. Now, one of the characteristics of crustaceans is that they have two pairs of antennae. And in this animal, uh, what we see is that we have one, one antenna here, that's antenna number one, or the first antenna, and second antenna is right here. Now there are some other structures in the background. These are the parts of the appendages covering the mandibles, and we'll look at those in a little bit. Another characteristic, at least for the group that has the crabs, is compound eyes on stalks. Now something really interesting is these stalks have muscles. They can pull them down between the dorsal and ventral layers or plates of the exoskeleton to give them additional protection. This large structure up here is the carapace of the cephalothorax. <clears throat> so the head and the thorax in these animals is fused together into a single large tagma. The other thing that we can see from this perspective is the appendages. So there are five pairs of appendages, one, two, three, four, five, and these, these crabs belong to a group of arthropods called the decapods within subphylum crustacea. And that's because they have 10 legs. So decapods, 10 legs. I do want to uh, identify a few of the parts and pieces of a couple of these appendages. Now, by the way, these, uh, these appendages are called periopods, periopod one through five. And periopod one, the one that has these large pinching organs, on, this appendage is called a chelipede, the whole thing. It's periopod one, it's also a chelipede. Now, some of the interesting anatomy of the chelipede is that this, this structure up here that actually does the crushing or the cutting. This part up here is called the manus. Manus means hand. And then we have this other part that is able to articulate and can pinch down. Now something that's really interesting, and if you have a chance to look at these in person, I want you to look at this, is that on one of these, the claw, let me zoom in so you can see this in a little more detail, the teeth of the claw are rounded. And these rounded bumps on this are designed for crushing. If you look at the teeth on the other claw, you can see that they're not rounded, but instead are sharper. This is a cutting claw. So blue crabs, and typically most crabs, have one crushing claw and one cutting claw is, very, is actually typical. So again, we have the chelipede. The chelipede with the manus and the dactyl. Now, periopods two, three, and four are referred to as walking appendages. You see they terminate in these spike-like articles, and they use those for grip and, uh, and pushing and moving along the bottom. Periopod number five, however, is a swimming leg. And if you notice, the last couple of articles of the leg are flattened and actually have relatively abundant amounts of uh, CD coming off of them. So what these animals do is they will alternatingly beat one swimming leg up and then the other one and alternating back and forth like this. And as they do that rapidly, they're able to push themselves through the water, kind of wobbling through the water as they go. So that's how these animals swim. And that's the dorsal anatomy of the blue crab. So let's flip it over and take a look at what we can see on the other side. 
So the undersurface, or the ventral surface of the blue crab, let's start up here at the anterior end. Again, we can see the compound eye on the stalk, antenna number two, antenna number one, and then these structures are attached to a structure called the third maxilliped. Maxillipeds are appendages that are used to help facilitate feeding. So that, of course, they do use periapod one or their chelipeds for grasping, crushing, and cutting food, but then after it's, it's been cut into little bits and pieces, the maxillipeds, now there's a first maxilliped, and then underneath here there's a second and a third that cover this structure in here, a very hardened structure, the mandibles. So if I push the, maxilla, the maxillipeds back on the other side, we can uncover the mandibles. So the mandibles crush side to side as opposed to our jaw, which crushes and chews up and down. And so I'm not going to remove these appendages, but just be aware that there are first, second, and third maxillipeds in there. Okay, this is the, uh, the ventral, these are the plates of the sternum, which make up the ventral exoskeleton of the cephalothorax. And you can see there are individual plates that are fused together to make up this structure. Now, in addition to the cephalothorax, these animals do have an abdomen. And the abdomen is wrapped around underneath, and that's this structure right here. Now, this is a male. Male blue crabs, and in fact, all male crabs, have a, relatively speaking, a long, thin abdomen like this. A female would have an abdomen that's more rounded and much broader, like so. Because what she does is when she lays her eggs, she'll lay eggs and hold them and brood them as a, a large mass of eggs called a sponge of eggs that she'll hold in place. But males, of course, don't do that. So what you can do is you can actually pull this abdomen out and open, exposing the structures inside. Now, we ha males have, male blue crabs have these two long swimmerettes. Remember the... Um, the appendages on the abdomen are called swimmerettes, and these long swimmerettes are used to transfer packets of sperm uh, that he has produced <clears throat> into the female, <clears throat> excuse me, the female reproductive opening, and she can use those to uh, fertilize her eggs. The male reproductive openings are up here, these little, these little dots, these little holes. Now, down here on the tip of the abdomen is the anus, the very tip down here. So we have the anus, the abdomen, the male swimmerettes, the male reproductive openings up here, and that's really about all there is to see. And of course, as with biology, every one of these parts and pieces has a name, but I'm not really concerned about going through those at this time, or I'm not going to go through those in this video. So that is the dorsal and ventral external anatomy of the blue crab, um, Kalanectes. By the way, the reason we call these blue crabs is because when they're alive, especially shortly after they molt, there is brilliant blue and reddish coloration on the exoskeleton, especially on the appendages near the body. So anyway, that is an introduction to external anatomy of the blue crab. All right, let's take a look at the internal anatomy. Now, the way that I've found, at least the most effective way that I've found to open up the body cavity without totally disrupting everything inside is to take a pair of uh, iris scissors, like these, or whatever scissors you happen to have, and insert them into the angle of this joint between the cephalothorax and the abdomen. There's a thin layer of tissue that runs right along here that's actually an ecdysal line. So there's a thin layer of tissue here. And then cut using your scissors as close to the edge as possible to the outer edge of the dorsal carapace of the cephalothorax. Then I recommend using a soft probe if you have one 
gently lift up on the posterior end, removing, scraping the inner surface. I, I actually pick it up and look down inside as I'm doing this, and I remove soft tissues that are attached to this, the dorsal um, carapace of the cephalothorax, and then you can lift it away, revealing the anatomy that's inside. I haven't done anything other than remove the dorsal um, the dorsal wall or the dorsal portion of the um, cephalothorax or the exoskeleton. But let's look at a few things that we can see here before we do anything else. <clears throat> so to begin with, back here, this structure right here is the heart. And if you're not careful, you'll rip the top of the heart off and remove it with the exoskeleton. So take your time as you do this. These structures out here these are gills. And there's actually a thin layer of tissue that covers the gills that is removed when you remove the cephalothorax. And it's, you can kind of see me scraping it away here. So the gill chamber is actually isolated from the hemoseal chamber inside. Now you notice the gills come to a point right here so that the heart can beat and pulse and push um, blood received from the gills out to the body. There are some muscles right in here. These are the posterior gastric muscles. And that's pretty much it for the moment. So what I want to do is I'm going to come in and remove some of this additional tissue that lined the inner surface of the exoskeleton, exposing other, um, other organs. Now I will mention one thing. This whole region up here this is the stomach of the crab. And I guess I'll mention a couple of other things. This kind of uh, yellowish bulbous material, this is digestive gland. And we'll have to see if these animals are um, mature enough or ripe enough to see the, uh, the gonads. But if the gonads are present, they will be anterior to these uh, digestive cecae or digestive glands. So the, the gonads would be right up here under the edge, like so. so All right, so I have removed the epidermis and other tissue <clears throat> lining the inner surface of the dorsal wall of the carapace. So what we can see now is I've opened the pericardial chamber in here, and we can more clearly see the heart, the two large ostea, the ostea are the um, openings through which the heart receives blood, and then they contract and push the blood out to the rest of the animal. In fact, in these animals, it's not blood, it's hemolymph, because they have an open circulatory system. Remember that we call it blood only if the blood is always in a vessel, an artery or a vein or a capillary. But in these animals, they have large hemocele spaces inside of the body, so it's technically hemolymph. Again, these structures out here are the gills. And up here, we've exposed the stomach. So the stomach is a large organ. It has muscles attached to it that allow it to, um, to push and pull. And inside is a structure called the gastric mill that they can use to provide additional chewing or grinding to what the mandibles did. And coming off of the posterior end of the stomach is the intestine, which has not been exposed yet, but runs ventral to the heart and comes to this point, turns the corner, and then goes out to the abdomen where the anus is located. These two kind of brownish, reddish structures are the mandibular muscles. These large muscles insert on the dorsal wall of the exoskeleton and are used to help drive the, uh, the force of the mandibles. Up here, uh, it's been removed, but there are muscles normally found here and here that are the anterior gastric muscles. So they have muscles that are anterior. They have posterior gastric muscles um, that were more easy to see before I removed the, the other material. Okay, over here on the side, we can still see the digestive cecae on either side and this is a male and so 
the, uh, the testes are going to be white in color. And it's hard to tell whether these are just additional digestive cecae material or whether this is testis up here. But this is where the testes would be located or visible when the animal was reproductive and ripe. Oh, one other thing. There is, there it is. There's one on this side too. There's an appendage. This is a structure called the gill cleaner. And if you zoom in on this, you can see the gill cleaner has long CD coming off. And they use this to stroke back and forth across the gills to literally brush them and keep them clean. Okay, let me do a couple of other things and I'll get back to you. All right, so what I've done is I've removed the, uh, the digestive cecae from both sides. And uh, this makes it a lot easier to see other structures in this uh, animal. And so these are mandibular muscles on the, these are, would be posterior mandibular muscles, and these are lateral mandibular, excuse me, la lateral mandibular muscles. Okay, before I do anything else, I want to show you this. You rock this up like so. Zoom in a little bit. What we can see up here, if you notice this whitish material right here and right here, these are the circumesophageal connectives, and the brain is going to be up in here. Um, this globular structure with connectives going around the esophagus. We can see connectives going out toward the eyes and the antennae. All right, let's carry on. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the stomach. So I removed the stomach. I'll show you where it was in just a second. But I've opened it up. This was the dorsal wall up here. And inside are hardened structures. If you, I can feel it with my, with my probe tip. These are hard structures. They're connected to muscles and they can grind as food comes into the stomach and continue to provide additional grinding um, action. So these, uh, these muscles associated with the stomach allow it to change shape, and as the, muscle, as the stomach changes shape, it causes these hard tooth-like structures to come together and creates some grinding. So here's our crab. The heart is removed, the stomach is removed, but with this preparation you can now see this tube-shaped structure right here. Stomach. This is the intestine, which then comes down here, turns the corner, and goes to the tip of the abdomen where the anus is located. Okay. So up here, as I mentioned before, is the brain dorsal to the esophagus, which came in right through this opening right here. We see the nerve connectives coming down on either side. And you can't really see it happen right here, but down here, we can see the paired nerve cord. And in this animal, the body has is, is become squat, anteriorly, po anteriorly, posteriorly compressed. And so this whitish material that you see the spot right here in the middle, but this whitish material around it is all nervous material. So we have a large, um, nerve plexus down here with these radiating nerves coming off and going out to each of the periopods um, to help control them. So, and then there is also <clears throat> a nerve cord that continues out. Let me see if I can get this into frame. So right here, this thin nerve cord continues posteriorly out into the abdomen and controls the activities there. So a little bit of a view, actually a pretty good view, of the nervous system of this animal. Okay, so there is one more thing I want to show you. And I didn't really know this until just now, doing some additional poking around. So what I did, as you can see, is I have removed the gills from this side of the crab's body and exposing this structure right here. This is another gill cleaner. So they have a gill cleaner on the dorsal surface of the gills 
and a gill cleaner on the ventral surface of the gills. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I thought I'd just pass that along.